They turn torque-wise, both of them, and also the rim of the steering wheel. Plus, I get a display here, and then I can let go. The car will drive by itself. The responsibility is with the car, and I can do other things. For example, let's just check what's on the browser. My name is Jochen Haab, here at Mercedes-Benz in Immendingen. I'm responsible for concept and field validation, testing technologies and technical communication of the Intelligent Drive driver assistance systems. Intelligent Drive, that is the combination of comfort and safety, but on the technical side also the combination of sensors, for example camera, radar, ultrasonic sound, um, but also the brain of the driver assistance systems, which is our Intelligent Drive controller. said at the beginning of the movie or the, the clip. Um, but now we will introduce level three. And of course we developed the car for level three and the level three car will have a lot more technology than the level two car. It will be capable of level two as well, but it will, for example, have uh, a whole new sensor setup in addition to the radars we know, to the, um, to the camera and the ultrasound sensors. Uh, we also, for example, use the the 360 degree camera is now not only for showing the picture when you park, for example, but also as a sensor to detect lines directly next to the car when driving slowly. But the most important sensor, of course, is the LiDAR, which gives us the chance to use three independent uh, sensor technologies. So in case you are running out of the range of one sensor, let's say you have a deep uh, standing uh, sun, as we have, it's, it's getting evening here, um, it might be blinded by the light. <laughs> so to speak, you still have your radar and your LiDAR, and your LiDAR is also capable of seeing lines, for example. Um, or if a stone hits your radar uh, in the front grille, you still have your LiDAR and your camera. So we have a two out of three scenario. In the ideal case, we have three sensors seeing the same thing on different technologies, but we still have two to rely on who can, or which can uh, confirm each other. And that is the philosophy we have, we have in level two. So now we have three, and if one gets lost, we still have two and we're still safe. Plus, we have redundant systems. We have a redundant brake, we have a redundant uh, electronics and electric system, uh, we have a uh, redundant steering system, so that the car can always, um, even if you have a major failure in the car, um, electronic or whatever uh, it might be, the car can still get to a safe state, which in the worst case would be just stop in the lane and put on the hazards. Um, and we did not have that up to now. We will introduce that with the level three car. So yes, it's a change, not in philosophy, but it's a change in technology that enables us to do this safely. The honest answer is no, not yet. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I have to say that. Um, level three, as you know, the, the terminology is conditional automation and the conditions at the beginning now will be, it has to be uh, above zero centigrade. Um, we have to see lines, it, it will be on uh, freeways uh, or motorways, I don't know what the correct terminology is in Canada, in Autobahn in Germany, which you surely know. And of course, uh, the speed range is um, in the range of a traffic jam. We also use the swarm, so we we start with zero to 60 in Germany. We're planning to enhance that to a, a congested traffic speed, but not on a free highway um, with snow on the road uh, and no surrounding vehicles. That's not in the scope yet. We are starting slowly as we usually do it with our assistance systems. As you know, we started with the Stronic from, from 30 to 180, and now we go from zero to 210 kilometers an hour. So we do the same thing here. We start slowly and then we gradually increase the use cases. Uh, same thing goes for rain. We will not offer it at the beginning if there is uh, heavy rain. Um, that's still also details. We don't know which type of rain we still feel comfortable with so we can always rely on our sensor data. Um, the smallest problem is dirt on our sensors um, or also if it's getting close to zero, if, if you would have um, some, some, some ice on the, on the sensor, we have a heating in there and we have a cleaning, um, um, what do you call it, a little thing where, where the water comes out to clean, for example, the LiDAR, yeah. 
uh, so so a spray a spray Düse in German. Sorry, <laughs> I got lost. <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is important for us, but of course that's two poles. One pole is to be able to drive everywhere under all conditions. That's unrealistic for the, for the moment, just our, uh, if you think of the sensor technology. But also if you were driving on a completely snow covered road, I don't know if it's a good idea to drive automatically. Um, and, the, and the other thing is, uh, on, on the other side, um, it would be if it's perfect conditions. And I think we have a very good compromise. We don't, re we don't necessarily need perfect conditions, sunshine, 20 degrees, whatever, we go very close, as close as we can to the zero degree point because just, that's just the, um, the freezing point and we'd want to avoid the car driving without you being able to take over immediately um, in black ice. We just want to avoid that. But of course between perfect conditions and let's say three or five degrees and uh, dizzle, um, that is not perfect conditions. and. Um, there's something in between and we start with a compromise. Yes, we start as it is typical for Mercedes on the safe side because what we also want to avoid that people over rely on the system. Okay, you saw me driving in that in that clip uh, in, in rain. That is tricky. I said, I said that before uh, and of course we're working on that. That's also something we do. That's why we don't introduce it right away. Uh, we have the use cases, uh, let's say, in our sack. We have them in the pocket. But now we have to look into the not-so-nice conditions. We have to look into the, in the emergency cases. What do we do? What kind of rain? How heavy can the rain be that we still feel safe? We do a lot of field validation. That's in the scope for the next year or so. Um, as you know, we, we plan to introduce it in the second half of next year. So um, we work on that. I can't tell you exactly what the threshold will be. Uh, we're, we're just turning those knobs and trying to get to as nasty conditions as we can. That's a plan, yes, but there will be a limit. <clears throat> Well, to be honest, we're a little farther away. Um, one reason is, of course, Corona, but the other reason is, is the business case. We approach this from the, from the level three side and we want to get towards level four. I mean, obviously you, you saw or you will see in the footage that we offer a, a level four driverless uh, parking system in the car from now on, as soon as the infrastructure is there, but the car is ready for that. Um, and of course, our next plan is to get level four, which means you're still in the car and you can take over. But of course, the, the range of where you can drive automated is a lot, lot bigger. Uh, level five is a little farther down the road. I'm, I'm afraid. Um, yes, I did tell that at the time, but you probably followed our, our company's communication. Uh, the project we had with Bosch, for example, um, was postponed and our level five um, thoughts are now focused Sorry for the car. <laughs> Somebody's doing emergency braking at more than 100 kilometers an hour. Um, um, we're now focusing that on the, on the truck side. Um, so that will probably be our first business case. We offer that. We're still working on it. Um, but um, in German, you say, you say with reduced steam. I don't know if that's a terminology in English, but uh, I, I guess you get the picture. Yes, yes. 